And many who come to this conference come with a desire to improve, to increase, to be filled with the Spirit of God, which is our source of spiritual energy for work and for results. And the danger we face as leaders and speakers in a conference like this is to have taken for granted certain prerequisites that we know as precondition for being filled with the power of God. Anything that has to be filled needs to be prepared and made ready for the filling. If you go to where Coca-Cola, uh, this is a country where there's a lot of recycling and so you may not be familiar with a, a bottle that was used before, bring brought back to the bottling company to be refilled. But somewhere else, that's what happened. And there is no refilling if there is no, first of all, rinsing and cleansing of the bottle. Because where it went, certain other filth and dead would have entered into it. And you don't want to mix it, mix the new wine with some dirty things it brought from the market. So there's a cleansing as a procedure that is precedent to the filling. And this is also part of the apostolic tradition. When the disciples got to Jerusalem and were going to be there to wait for the filling of the Holy Spirit, the first thing they did was to balance their equation, balance their figures. It used to be 12, less one. The one that is a betrayer. And they settled down first to create that adjustment and create a spiritual balance by getting another person to replace Judas. Judas, or his type, could not be in Jerusalem to be filled. It would be wrong to fill Judas. So the process and the procedure was to expunge and to excuse a person like Judas get out of the way. And like the Bible said, for him to go to his own place. And once he took exit of the team, and the Bible says that two others who are equally available, but less known. And this is a serious warning to everybody. If you step out, there are two people to replace you. So take your time. Guard your place. Nobody is indispensable. And what I've discovered is that each time somebody ejects, another one injects, and the person who comes in is even better than the one that went out. Saul, big man, went out. David, small boy, come in. So once they balance and create a level ground for the Holy Spirit to play on the church and the leaders, then the Holy Spirit came. The assumption that we have in the house is no longer tenable to say, oh, this is a pastor, this is a man of God. Well, we also now know that there are pastors who drink There are pastors who smoke. There are pastors who, in their privacy, you, you find them touching the breasts of their members. And these are the ones we want to feel. This mouth that we want to consecrate for prophecy is also the one that kills strange women. We may not see you, but you have suddenly made yourself unfit. To benefit from this grace we are talking about. 